Hi there and welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name is Jane. Now in today's video I am going to make a frayer top, another frayer top. I need, my wardrobe is a little bit lacking in these type of tops and I thought well why not make it, record it on the camera and if you fancy having a go you can sew along with me too. So before I go over to the overhead camera and my cutting desk, uh, obviously it's the Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons, which the pattern is in her book, the stretch book. The pattern for the Freya is in the back with all the other patterns in this book. So obviously I'm going to be having another go at the Freya. Now I am by no means an expert at all. So I just thought I would sew another Freya top. And if you're brand new to sewing or you're rusty or you're just coming back into sewing and maybe you haven't got much confidence or what have you and you haven't worked with jersey before well i was in that position oh maybe eight months ago and um this was my first jersey make using the freya pattern and um never looked back so i thought i would share with you how to make it Obviously, you can follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the book, but sometimes it's nice to visually see somebody make the top. And I wanted to show you from my perspective that because I'm not expert, I and and you know I'm learning as I go along still. And I just thought I could show you from my perspective, so you don't feel intimidated or daunted at all because it's just little old me sewing under the Freya top. This one I'm wearing looks slightly different at the neckline. I don't know if you've noticed because the Freya top has the mock roll neck collar. Um, but when I cut this one out, I somehow cut the, because um, the Freya top comes in a cowl neck and the mock, the mock neck, the mock roll neckline. And I, whatever reason, I don't know what I was doing. I cut the back out, but when I come to cut the front out, I cut the front out for the cowl neck and it obviously didn't match the back so i had to do a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery shall we say and this is what turned out and it's a nice happy accident i really like it and i've kept um a draft of the mistake i made and so I, if i make any more i can make them exactly the same as this so don't be defeated if you do find you make mistakes because it's not the end of the world there are loads of ways around it and this is what i did and i'm really pleased with it so let's go make another Freya top. I've got my pattern cut out. I'm doing the size four. So if you want to get your pattern, if you want to sew along with me, you obviously need to get your Freya pattern. You need to get your all transferred and traced over onto your tissue paper and obviously what size you need. And you need obviously the Freya front, the Freya back, the Freya band collar and the Freya sleeve. So let's go over to my cutting station. Okay, so we're at the cutting table and this is the fabric I'm going to make my Freya top in. This is, again, just a jersey. I don't think it's that brilliant quality, but I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine for a Freya top. Um, it's got quite a bit of stretch width ways and very little, little bit of stretch length ways. Now, when I did this green one that I'm wearing, to calculate the stretch, the percentage of the stretch in my jersey, I've got this little gauge that's stuck to my cutting station. I think you can get them, you can download them off the internet. This one I got from Maven Patterns and it was just part of when I did my summer set t-shirt. It's this little gauge on seeing how much stretch your t-shirt fabrics or your jersey fabric has got and obviously depending on how much stretch it is it's going to depend on how what it looks like when you actually wear it if it's got very little stretch obviously it's going to be um, less forgiving than something that's got quite a lot of stretch and this is I think this is just a single knit jersey it's quite a fine one but it's got quite a bit of stretch so for the green one all I did was got took 10 centimeters of fabric and this is my little gauge here to show you so that's my my gauge and this 
section here is the 10 centimeter. So all I do is measure my 10 centimeter. I don't know, from there to there is 10 centimeters of fabric. And all I'm gonna do is hold on to this end and stretch it roughly where the pin is and see how far it stretches on my gauge. Just stretch it and see where it takes me and comfortably stretch it or to overly stretch it. And it just takes me to roughly 30, 35% stretch. So that's how much stretch is in that fabric. And obviously I've got it on absolutely fine. Um, it hasn't got as much stretch as my mustard stripe one, uh, but it fits absolutely fine. So just something to be aware of when you, before you're making your, your garments with your fabric, you can test how much stretch there's in there. And obviously this is the original collar um, for the frayer, but because I had my happy accident, I didn't use it. And I'll just show you what I cut off the back off this green one that I'm wearing. I had to cut this off at the back. So I've kept that as a template because I quite like this happy accident that I'm wearing. So I'm going to call it Freya Hack now because obviously I've hacked the neckline slightly and I quite like this um, version. So I've kept it and I'll show you what I mean where I went wrong. So on the pattern piece, this is the front and when I was tracing it out, I should have traced, I'm doing size four, so I should have gone all the way, all the way up and then across to the end and then down this cutting line, uh, but I didn't. I went all the way up to there and stopped and I came all the way down for the cowl neckline. So obviously shorter shoulder because I should have carried on so my front shoulders didn't match my back shoulders so that's why I had to cut that section out the back so it would fit the front so that's the only difference I, I did so that's where I went wrong so just be careful obviously when you're cutting them out choose which neckline you're going for so obviously I've now got an adapted front piece and I'll show you so this is my paper piece <clears throat> and obviously that's where I followed the cowl, the cowl neckline and obviously the, the neckline I should have been was here so I've had to put another piece of paper on and bring the pattern back to what I wanted for the original Freya um, but obviously I can now use this line, I'll just use it with my tracing, my tracing fabric wheel if I wanted to do the version that I've got on so I've just two versions now and again for the back that's the back and that's the piece I cut off to do for the second version and I've made a little note and I've made some binding rather than obviously the the roll neckline so if I want to do the happy accident version I've got all the details here and I would cut along that line and that line so, uh, so anyway, it's worked out quite well because I like both styles. But for obviously this sew along, we'll do the, the mock roll neckline. But I'm going to keep those pieces as reference. So you, you get all your pattern pieces cut out. So you've got your, your sleeve, your front, your back and your neck piece. So I'm going to use this pretty floral t-shirt in fabric. And I also got it in like a creamy background. And if it sews up pretty well, then I can use it for some basic t-shirts and vests and what have you because it's quite pretty. Make nice vests to sleep in and things like that. So we'll give this fabric a go. So obviously we've got the front and the back and the both on cut on the fold. I don't want to waste any of my fabric so I'm going to try and be as frugal as I can cutting out because any leftover scraps, as you probably know now, I'm going to make into some more knickers because I think it's absolutely a brilliant way of using up your t-shirt or your jersey fabric. So that's about right. So I'm going to lay out all my pieces, obviously cut them out. We'll then do our stabilising of our back shoulder seams. So I'm going to start cutting these out.
okay so I've got all the pieces cut out and everything's got the notches and what have you so now the next stage is to find the back piece and we're going to that's the front get the back piece and we're going to add some stabilizing tape to the wrong side of the shoulders just in that seam allowance one and a half centimeter seam allowance this is a section that we're on to now so we're going to add some stabilizing uh, tape to the wrong side of the shoulders so i'm going to use some iron on stay tape and i'm just going to iron it on on both sides of the shoulder so i've just got some iron on stay tape and I'm just going to cut two pieces and iron them both to my shoulders. This prevents the, um, the weight of the sleeves uh, pulling your shoulders out of, out of um, shape. So you only add it to the back on the wrong side. So I'm just going to iron those pieces down. There's my stay tape just ironed on but you can as I said before you can use ribbon or anything like that and you just add, add it if you haven't got anything iron on you can just zigzag stitch across just like it says in the book I mean you can't fall off following the instructions on the book in the book so now we're going to sew the front to the back of the shoulder seams so obviously right sides together matching up your notches my shoulders right sides together front onto the back and obviously I'm going to sew all of mine on my overlocker but if you don't have an overlocker you can just set your machine to um, a narrow zigzag stitch and um, the recommended stitch for sewing with jerseys is um, two to two and a half millimeters long by one to one and a half millimeters wide or you might have the lightning stitch on your machine so you could use that too but I'm going to use the overlocker for this so I'm just going to head on over to the overlocker and stitch my two shoulder seams together right so I'm just going to overlock my shoulder seams and the seam allowance is one and a half centimeters the seams overlocked so next step is to add our neck so there's our neck piece and we have to sew the two short ends together and match up your notch and we're just going to sew the short end So there's our neck piece and we now fold it in half, just going to pin it, just match the notches up. Now I like to put my seam at the back of my top um, so I'm going to put mine at the back, I don't like it at the side. So I'm just going to get obviously my top, obviously right sides together. So that's the centre back. I oh know this is the centre front, so I'm going to pin that to the front part. So there's my notch at the centre front and I know there's my notch for the centre front. So I'm just going to match those notches. Pin 
the side sections just roughly because I'm going to slightly stretch it as I saw it in. So there we go. So we've got our neck band pinned to the top and I'm going to start at the back and stitch it in with my overlocker. I'm going to turn, turn my work inside out because it's easier to work in a circle. And There is our lovely neckband, so let's just turn it through. Like I say, I put the seam at the back because that's where I prefer it. Uh, but you can put it at the side to match up the side seam if you prefer. But I like mine at the back. And then I can also tell this is the back of the shirt, back of the top. So there is our lovely neckband. So can I just say, I'm not an expert, I don't profess to be an expert, but I just thought I would show you how I make my Freya top. Um, if you're new to sewing and sometimes you feel a bit daunted or intimidated, just watch me and then you won't, because uh, I'm not an expert. So just take your time like I do, put your pins in, match your notches up, and um, that's the best way to do it and just get a little bit of confidence, self confidence in yourself and you can do it. And if you start off with something like the Freya top, which has only got the front, the back, the two sleeves and the neck, once you've cracked this, I'm sure it'll give you a great big confidence boost and then you can go on to do lots more sewing with jersey because this was my first jersey um, pattern I did last year when I came back into my dressmaking. As soon as I made it, it was like, yes easy peasy so I am certainly not an expert at all right so now we need to put the sleeves in so I'm going to go get the sleeves now you probably know this but in case you don't you have two notches on the back and you always have one notch on the front so in the arm side and also on the sleeves so you can tell and differentiate between the front and the back so obviously there's one sleeve so it's got one notch and on the other side it's got the two so you just match up your notches your single notch to your single notch and your double notch to your double notch and with right sides out this side here has got the one notch and this side has got the two notches so I'm going to get my sleeve and find the sleeve with one notch so it's not that sleeve it's going to be this sleeve so obviously right sides together there's my one notch there so I'm just going to match the notches, the double notch, and then we're going to match up the notch at the top of the sleeve to match the shoulder seam. So that notch on that seam there. And then we're just going to pin the sleeve to the rest of the top. So this is going to be pin pin central, I think, on this top. Depends on the jersey. If some jersey got, especially cotton jersey, it's got a lot more hold, a lot more body to it, and you you can get away with just a few pins. Whereas this is really curly and drapey. Just pin all the way around. So I've just pinned the sleeve all the way around and I'm just going to do the same on the other sleeve and we're now going to stitch our sleeve to the top. And repeat for the second sleeve, exactly the same. So there's our sleeves, so now we're going to so the sleeve sides and the sides so you're just literally going to pin your sleeves all the way down matching up your 
underarm seams. And then your side seams. And there's a couple of notches on either side, so matching up your notches. So there's one, there's the other one. This fabric is so curly, it's unreal. It's really hard to handle. I'm not keen on this fine knit jersey, but I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous when it's finished. So we're going to stitch all the way from the cuff, all the way to the arm, under the arm, and all the way down the sides to the bottom. We're going to do this for both sleeves. So we've got our sleeves on, we've got our collar on. All that's left to do now is do our hem and our sleeves. But, so it's looking really pretty so far. I've just got to now, um, I'm gonna cover stitch my cuffs and my hem and then do the neck line. But you don't need to do that. Obviously, if you don't have a cover stitch machine, you can just do um, zigzag lightning stitch. Even though the, I don't really like the drape, the fabric is really pretty and it's got a little bit of a touch of Kath Kids into it, I think. So it's going to look really pretty on. So I'm just going to now thread my cover stitch machine and we shall have our frayer top made. So because this fabric is quite drapey and quite flimsy and I don't want it to have that tunneling effect when I do my hems, I've added some hemming tape. It's like a transparent... Uh, I you iron it on and you peel the paper off and it leaves like a transparent film and just then we'll then I'm going to fold it over and then that should give it a bit more stability when I do my cover stitch but that it's exactly the same if, for if you're going to do your zigzag or your lightning stitch um, it just gives it that, especially with this fine knit fabric, it just gives it that little bit more stability and prevents that um, sometimes puckering like a tunneling effect. And I'm doing a three needle finish on this and I'm just going to line up. just finished off my hem and that's the opposite side and I'm just going to repeat that for both the cuffs and then around the neck band. So I've just got my last sleeve to do so I shall just quickly do that and obviously I've added my hem hemming tape onto the cuffs as well and if you're interested in which one I'm using it's the Vlizaline and it's called the Stretch Fix T30 and it comes in a pack and um, you just iron it, iron it on, peel the paper off, iron it down and it just gives that little bit of extra uh, support for all your hems, it's really good. And that's a Vlizaline Stretch Fix T30. I'll put a link for this in the box below. If you're interested, right, so let's just get this Last hem done. I'm just going to tie these ends off. And that's the inside. And that's the outside. But obviously, if you haven't got a cover stitch, 
very similar effect with your zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. So that's our Freya top all finished. I'm going to turn it through and I'll try it on and show you what it looks like. So this is the finished version. I think it's really pretty. It's very Kath Kidson, I think. Very Kath Kidson look to it and uh, I really like it. I like this neckline, but I also like my happy accident neckline too. So I'm going to have a go at making some more of these. But if you like today's video, please don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed and you want to follow along with me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hope I've given you a little bit of confidence to have a go at making the Freya top yourself. Don't be, don't be intimidated, don't be daunted. If you're new to dressmaking, please have a go. If I can make it, then you can certainly make it. You just take your time and you will be really impressed. You will be so impressed with yourself when you've got your first Freya top and you're wearing it. I'm telling you, I've never looked back. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of um, confidence to have a go yourself. I'm off to do more sewing as usual and uh, lots more videos coming your way. Thanks so much for joining me today though and uh, please take care and as always happy sewing.